Hi, I'm Piggy March, and we're, today we're doing a feature for Dodson and Horrell for the British Riding Club magazine. I will be riding an eight-year-old horse, I Diablo Joe, showing you a few tips of some basic exercises that we're doing at home to help with just basic everyday training to help you for your competitions. I hope you enjoy it. I've just got into the arena and I'm just going to give him a quick trot and cant around just for a few minutes, nothing um, nothing much just before I start with the pole work, just to get his muscles a little bit warm and um, focused on what he's doing for the day. So to start with, I've just got some trot poles in here. Mine are very slightly raised trot poles, cavaletti fences, but it doesn't matter if they're just poles on the floor. The same thing applies for this exercise. And there isn't really a particular size that you have to have them on of circle. This is just what I do. Basically, I've got eight poles in total for each side of roughly on roughly about a 20 meter circle and the idea of this exercise is to have them on the bend to just try and have the horse in trot trot round in a really nice basic outline keeping the outline and the rhythm through the trot and it really helps try and establish a little bit of cadence in the horse but also just trying them to they've got to keep the same rhythm the whole time they do this exercise and this can all help towards going towards the canter poles or, which then helps going towards the jumping so it's all the ABC of, of training but I would do it started in trot and we can start it on just keeping going on one big circle including both sets of trot poles in and then I will start varying the exercise by either raising some of the trot poles in, as you'll be able to see shortly, which gets the horse to lift even more in the trot, and B being able to then figure of eight in between my trot poles. So it really, I can get a really good bend and really start getting the horse to, in changing direction, really break up in his rib cage and try to help get the horse as supple as possible. A really basic exercise, but I think if you can keep them round, soft, traveling nicely forward in front of your leg, focusing themselves on the poles. They have to think themselves as well. It's not an exercise that we try and find the right stride for. It's a really good exercise both in trot and canter, that the horse has got to use his own brain to think of his own footwork. And, you know, it's very good brain to leg coordination at the same time of keeping them very rideable and in a great rhythm. It can cover loads of aspects, but it's an exercise I, I really believe in and would do probably once or twice a month with them, of all levels, whether it's a baby horse or an advanced horse. I've started with him quite round and deep and before people start getting excited that the horse is 
it can be over bent or something or it's not a dressage outline I think a, a lot of training the training I do especially with a lot of event horses that aren't naturally built uphill or can go in just one outline it's very good for them to be able to stretch and be deeper um, to me having a horse over bent or having them lower can be very good at building up their strength and muscles to be able to carry a more advanced outline. The only time that I would be negative of a horse being deeper or or overbent would if a horse is very tight in the neck and tight in the rein. So for me having him trot down and be very free and really working from behind over his back to the bit, I don't mind if they are a bit rounder, a bit lower, a bit deeper, as long as it's not a tight rein and a tight neck. And I am also, you know, I don't mind if he wants to kick the poles, you know, that's his mistake. I also don't mind if they do do it, I just keep the consistency of going round, doing it again, doing it again, so they start to think for themselves. What I hate to see is if a horse makes a mistake of this sort of work that you get cross, you give them a kick or get tension in it. This is just purely an exercise of us keeping our balance, trying to keep a rhythm and let them think about it to try and think of their own footwork and by us getting us getting cross that we've kicked a pole or something is not going to help their focus so for me stay very um, emotionless about it just be thinking of our own balance your own posture your own line of trying to look where your pole is to see the line that you're going on um, and leave the rest you know of them to think of what they're doing we've just got to keep the rhythm and the pace and the line leave the rest for their own brain and footwork to do that. Okay, so with the trot poles, um, as you're on a curve, the inside of the curve should walk a yard and the outside should walk two yards. Um, but every horse is slightly different and I can do this exercise on lots of horses a day and can find on some horses I have to stay more to the inside and on others I go more to the outside just from their natural length of step. Um, so just be aware of that your, yourselves. It is quite good with some with a smaller stride to try and go a little bit more to the outside um, to start to think some can stretch or get that little bit more length of stride to him. But the important thing is, and what I just felt with mine on the when I was just doing that exercise, is not everyone I thought was perfect. There was some that he would fall in 
or feel like his body went very straight or I, you know he chipped in a little one and knocked all the poles or, or something so it's just continuously doing it is is then gives me the chance to think, you know, I think he's stronger one way than the other because one way he loves to keep a forward curve a lot easier than the moment I change onto the other way. He then goes more in a straight line and tries to fall into the inside. So it's just being aware of all these little things and that's why just doing it quite a few times, time again, and keeping the consistency of it, then you're, in a, you're then able to figure out the horse's strengths and weaknesses. I find this also a really good exercise for just, you know, not only their balance, but our balance. Well, when they're thinking of their footwork, or they step off early for the poles or chip in a short one, of us trying to keep our own balance and our own core strength, that we don't get left behind and fall back on the rain or, or think they've taken off and our body weight goes early. It's, it's trying to practice to keep ourselves as neutral and in the middle as possible and react to what they react to rather than us take be one step ahead of them thinking they're gonna take off and then your body's body weight's collapsed so um, it's just keeping the, our own core strength to react and I'll keep our feel so we can react with them and it's also I say our core strength but they can find this exercise quite hard having slightly raised poles or the trot poles we're about to then go to the canter poles and this is a real exercise that I think actually really helps them on their core strength as well as our own so um, I don't keep out here for ages and ages with it if I've used the poles I'll then give them a break and, and go again but you, they can work quite hard it's a good a good workout for just general general strength and conditioning and fitness work. I'm then going to move this exercise to have half half of it, so four of my poles are now going to be raised and be canter poles, so they're you know, 30 centimetres, 40 centimetres big. You can do it with poles on the ground as well. But this, having them slightly raised, makes you feel that it is verging towards jumping. And I'm very aware that um, one horse riders can't jump very much because they've only got one horse. So don't want to abuse them all the time by going out to practice for your own eye and for their eye to get in before you go to a competition. So this again is a great exercise of having half trot, half canter. To, to just be able to do your work on your transitions, which we're always working on, working on the balance, working on their fitness, their strength, everything that we've just said, to get into canter, to then be able to look up and get a rhythm, and it starts you starting to realise what your distance is before you get to your pole. So it's a really good exercise of sharpening up us up as a rider to prepare us well, when we go jumping over very small things which is not putting the wear and tear on our horses but it is just basic training that can help us prepare for our competitions.
lot of that, but you know, it's a it, it's such a cool exercise to improve them in many ways. And he actually started the more he did it to warm up to it. It showed that the transitions back from the canter to the trough time as forward as you'd like them. It goes a little bit croup high and that sort of thing. So by the time he got used to it, and I just brought his front end up into a higher outline then help, help to try and keep the bum from coming up. So in the trot work was quite interesting to me, he felt like he improved of being a bit deeper, but in the canter work he felt like he improved of being a bit more of an advanced outline. But every horse is different and every horse I learn something different every time I do the, do the exercise, but that's horses, we never stop learning or figuring out something different in them.